Hey folks, this is Todd Colburn with your Aerospace Structure Series. This video solves an example problem using continuous calculus for evaluating the slope and deflection of a sample beam. Enjoy. Here's a sample problem. Say we got a beam like this and we want the deflection. All we got to do is write an equation for the loading. In this case, we're going to have a reaction at A. We're going to have a reaction at B. We've got an applied force at P. We're going to write, now I think this problem actually solves it the longhand way, like using uh, summing forces and moments with successive free body diagrams. The easiest way to solve this is to be to write the singularity equation for the loading, W of X. W of X, we're going to have a one term for the force, the reaction at A. We're going to have another term for the reaction at B. Both of those are aimed upwards. We're going to make sure the sine co coincides with that. The force at P would cause a term to come into being, but actually we don't need it because it's the right end, so we'll just ignore that altogether. Now that we have a, the function of the loading, we integrate once for the shear, once for the moment, divide by EI as we integrate again for the slope, there's no slope constraints, so we will bring that constant integration forward, integrate again for the deflection, and now we've got two constants of integration. We plug in the boundary constraint at A of the deflection equals to zero, and the boundary constraint at B of the deflection equal to zero, and solve for those two constants of integration. Then we will go ahead, simplify our equation, either report our W or Y of X, in this case we want the deflection, we'd simplify our deflection equation. We can calculate what the maximum is. Remember, you find the maximum that by taking the derivative of the function and finding out where it's zero. That gives you a local maximum or minimum. But that's nonsensical work because actually, in this process, we already know what the, the derivative of the deflection is, and that's the slope. You already have the slope equation, so you can just take the slope equation, set it equal to zero, and that will tell you the locations where you might have a maximum deflection. You can look at the different ones and grab the one that's maximum. Okay? Blah, blah, blah. That's what all this crap says. Okay. Here's how it works. We first calculate our reactions by summing forces and moments. And with from our free body diagram, we then go ahead and as I said, this is just taking successive free bodies. This is the first method I presented last lecture. We'd first take a section cut in the relative may B. We take another section between B and C. That would give us two equations for the moment, which gives us a little bit more work. If we'd written a singularity function for this, it would be even easier. Don't worry, we'll look at some of those. There's our deflection of the elastic curve. Remember, since this is using the moment from A to B, this deflection of the elastic curve is only valid from A to B, not from B to C. We can then uh, integrate that puppy. We get our costs of integration, and then we go and impose our two boundary conditions of y equals zero. The first time we find out that shows that C2 is zero. The second time we find out a different value for C1, and then we plug it in and rearrange, and that's our equation for the elastic curve. This is y of x. Okay. Now that we have that, we then can go figure out, set that the derivative of that equal to zero. Once again, we already know what that is. If you just take that slope equation we already calculated, then that's what we need. Set that equal to zero. That gives us a position of the max deflection. We then can go back to our deflection equation shown here, plug in that value of x at the maximum, and that will give us what the actual maximum slope is, excuse me, deflection is. And remember, this is only valid between A and B. To be sure that that's actually the maximum, we would have to do this whole process again for the segment of B beam from B to C and find out if that deflection is more or less. It could be either depending on the relative geometry. Okay, folks. So I hope you like that example. If that cleared everything up for you, you can move on to the next in the video series. If not, take a look at example two, which will follow this one.